the Summit of America's wrapped last week, and it was hosted by the United States and held in L.A. Biden excluded Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, and that led to a kind of embarrassing for the United States boycott on the part of the president of Mexico. So AMLO didn't come. And we have a clip of Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, being asked about AMLO um, not coming. These people deciding they don't want to go. Yeah, let me just speak to the president of Mexico very quickly, because I have something in there for you. Uh, we have had candid engagement with President Lopez Obrador, as well with other regional partners, for more than a month regarding the issue of invitations uh, to the summit. It is important to acknowledge that there are a range of views on this question in our hemisphere, as there are in the United States. The president's principal position is that we do not believe that dictators should be invited, which is the reason um, that he has, um, the president has decided not to attend. Uh, we look forward to hosting Foreign Secretary Ibarra as the Mexican representative, and we welcome Mexico's significant contribution to the summit, to the to the major summit deliverables. President Biden and First Lady and the First Lady. We look forward to welcoming uh, President Obrador and, for, and the First Lady uh, of Mexico to Washington in July for a bilateral visit. At that meeting, by the way, July. I just have to interject. July, of course, is the same month that Biden, who doesn't like dictators, as um, she just said, Biden will be going to Saudi Arabia in July to meet with um, the not so democratically elected Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. But. Meeting President Biden and President Obrador will have the opportunity to carry the work forward for the summit. Um, to your second, to your other, to your actual question, I just wanted to make sure I dealt with Mexico because we had a little announcement there. Um, the U.S. remains the most powerful force in driving uh, hemis hemispheric actions to address core challenges uh, facing the people of the Americas: in inequality, health, climate, and food security. And so, the president continues to be a leader in the hemisphere. So there you have it. That's why these countries, these governments were not invited because the United States hates dictatorship. Right. And so then I, I'm trying to figure out how Ariel, Dr. Ariel Henry, the unelected prime, so-called prime minister of Haiti, who's implicated in the assassination of Haiti's president, um, got not only got invited, but also had a, you know, had take took pictures with Biden and 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 his wife. You know, and was very much um, part part of this uh, discussion. And the truth is, the U.S. is a very big power in the region in destabilizing the region, in installing dictators, and in really creating a completely undemocratic um, 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 region. And also through its bullying, right, using the OAS and so on and so forth. And so. You know, we at the Black Alliance for Peace actually called for a boycott of the summit because the U.S. had no right um, to, to have any kind of leadership in this region because of its actions. Um, and, and, and to me, the summit was, uh, was an embarrassment and really demonstrates a major imperial decline um, in the region. And the fact that these small countries were able to, you know, um, turn down, go against. A lot of them came, but a lot of people, you know, these, these six, I think, uh, countries that didn't come represent about 200 million people in the region, but that's a large number of people. And I think it's important that they didn't show up. And I think to me, in the future, I don't think the Summit of Americas will get, will, uh, I think in the future, the Summit of the Americas will probably get fewer people attending. And I think it's great that people are standing up for the exclusion of Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela. It's really embarrassing also, because I guess since AMLO was Biden was very eager to make sure it was a full event and he wanted to have a, people in attendance. So he had to send a special envoy to invite Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, who is probably the most authoritarian leader of all of Latin America, the most Trumpian. He even said he's, he's, he subscribes to the big lie theory. And he said that Biden's uh, election was suspicious and Biden had to go out of his way to invite him. And he was so desperate to invite him that the, there were reports that Bolsonaro demanded certain concessions to go, like not being criticized, not being asked about deforestation. So I want to show one more clip where um, Biden's poor press secretary has to t take another question. So here she is, interestingly enough, being asked about Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil. You'll see why it's interesting that that was a question when she answers. So I'm joking, so, uh, so I've been present with uh, President Bolsonaro of Brazil. Uh, he, he's reporting that 
the Brazilian government, President Bolsonaro, wanted specific concessions from the president for, the, for that meeting that they, and for his attendance at the Summit of the Americas that he wouldn't bring up. Uh, Bolsonaro was casting doubts about Brazil's election, election system as well as uh, uh, environmental concerns in the Amazon. Can you confirm that report? I, I cannot confirm that report. The president is um, is is looking forward to leaving tomorrow uh, to head to the summit. That clearly that we're uh, that we are hosting. Um, I can say this: the, the United States continues to recognize um, Juan Gu uh, Guado as the interim president of Venezuela. That said, while the interim government was uh, was not invited uh, to participate in the main summit, they are welcome to participate in all three stakeholder forums and other events. So not sure why she went from Brazil to Venezuela, but maybe it's in the spirit of internationalism and uh, anti-nation state borders. I, I don't think it's that, but uh, that was that was interesting, and it was it was kind of sad to see her embrace Guado Guaido Guado as she calls him. Um, it's pr it's pretty pathetic because he wasn't even invited to be a major player because of course he's not because he's not the president, but. Right. But, it, you know, I, I want to say two things in the second part will be about the speaker herself. Um, but uh, um, <laughs> the, I, I do think it, it's, it's uh, you know, of course, having, you know, Juan Guaido, who was beat up by people in oh, Venezuela yeah. just two days ago, um, it's all over the news. And where you have Blinken and, and, and um, Brian Nichols you know, calling him, one of them called him the president, the other one called him the interim president. And so this is, you know, this is a big farce, right? The democracy, so-called democracy summit, where you, you're you claiming that a person who was, who's not, does not even hold office, was not elected, you're claiming that that's the president of Venezuela, which is, which itself, you know, um, is ridiculous, especially since just a month ago, you flew down, sent your um, representatives to go beg Maduro for oil, um, after sanctioning Russia. So, so there's that, but I also, you know, I, I find it really um, distressing the amount, the number of black people um, being the face of, of the U.S. empire and Caroline Jean-Pierre in particular, because she's Haitian American. Um, and the fact that the U.S. the U.S. government's treatment of Haiti is so terrible and so racist. And, and, you know, and I also want to point to the fact that you know, since September, um, Biden has deported almost 30,000 Haitians. There's a deportation flight every day, um, you know, leaving here, taking people back to Haiti. And so you have you have these, this terrible treatment of Haiti by the U.S. government, um, by Biden. Then you have this Haitian American um, um, uh, press secretary, you know, claiming that Juan Guaido is, the, uh, you know, is the president of Venezuela. Um, and, and making all these statements about these unelected, undemocratic leaders in the region, to me, is just really jarring. Um, it's the same with having Brian Nichols, who's the Black American, who's in charge of the Western Hemisphere and the State Department. The sa same as jarring as having Lloyd Austin as the, the head of the Pentagon, as jarring as Linda Thomas-Greenfield as head of the UN. All of these yeah, Black I, people- I feel some of that too, with Greenfield. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, spouting, yeah, spouting all these, you know, these terrible, really anti-Black imperialist points, you know, talking points for the U.S. government. And so the U.S. can hide behind these Black faces, which which, which makes it, be, you know, very difficult to watch. But it's we definitely nevertheless need to condemn condemn these people and, and, and their participation and in, 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 in pushing for the empire. I thought the summit was a joke. Um, I thought it was embarrassing. I thought it was marked by a kind of diplomatic petulance on the uh, part of the Biden administration that I don't think went over well with anybody, even those people who attended other than Guado and, and uh, Bolsonaro. I, I also think that, that this um, is, the, the summit was overshadowed by two crises. One is a domestic crises um, that, you know, with inflation, uh, that we're seeing here with um, uh, the the spate of the ongoing spate of gun violence um, that that makes the the U.S. look like it's it's about to collapse itself um, and Biden trying to deny those things, but also the fact that um, since the uh, the operations in Ukraine started, um, the the United States is looking increasingly. Uh, crazy and and at the same time isolated on the international stage that that uh, a lot of people don't support um what what biden is 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 doing 
in the Ukraine and, and the war with Russia. Um, and, and people throughout the Caribbean, throughout the Americas, are experiencing the blowback of that, first of all, just in the cost of the price of food. And so if you look at the, the, the agenda of the Summit of the Americas, the key things that matter to people in the region were not dealt with in a substantial way. They, 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 they brought up questions of global warming, but didn't address the fact that the Pentagon is the largest emitter of, of CO2s. They, they barely brought up the questions of, of food security that are going to lead to serious problems of, of populations uh, being able to feed themselves in the Americas, especially when, when food supplies are controlled by companies like Monsanto and, and other US corporations. They didn't bring up the, the kind of flooding of, of many of these countries from Jamaica to Haiti to, to, to Mexico uh, with uh, uh, American weapons. Um, and what that's done to destabilize people. They didn't bring up, as, as Jamima pointed out, the, the kind of questions of immigration that are brought on by these questions of imperial stabilization. And they didn't bring up the, the fact that, that, that many Caribbean states are, are failing, as they like to say, largely because of, of US imperial policy. And, and so um, this, this was a, a, a kind of um, you know, diplomatic carnival that, that was ultimately meaningless, but if you scratch the surface behind it, you see uh, a, a real problem with U.S. hegemony uh, in, in the region. Um, and I think the, the U.S. can't go back at this point. Right. And I wanted to just quickly say one of the good things that happened with the people's, um, with the with the Summit of the Americas is the fact that there were three different um, um, anti-summits, right? So there, we had an, an, an anti-imperialism summit, which is the weekend before the People's Summit, which was all these grassroots organizations in um, the California area, from Union del Barrio, Black Alliance for Peace, and you know, Bayon, all these um, um, uh, organizations of people of color coming together and having out their own um, events, like two sets of events. Um, and that, and then of course the People's Summit, which which I think got a lot of play. But there's also a Workers' Summit. Um, that happened in Tijuana, um, you know, that included the countries that were left out. So what it did, it did allow the space for all these um, anti-summit people, grassroots organizations to come together and have our own conversations uh, outside of, of, of this farce. 